good morning and welcome to this next lecture uh, we were discussing the topic of fluid loading so there is a panel uh, in contact with a half space of fluid the panel is one dimensional and infinite uh, and we have come up with this expression here for the combined impedance okay and the idea is to make some heuristic comments okay so the impedance as seen by the force is a combination of plate and the fluid impedance okay now now the question is uh, what is the nature of the free wave now ok what is the nature of the free wave what that means is that if I have a remote excitation and there is an in vacuo free wave moving ok it is now in vacuum but then I attach or there is an acoustic fluid in place then this free wave will be modified right. So, if I say the original in vacuo free wave is kp now I will call it kp dash want to see what language or what symbol I have used for k mm. ok anyway k p I will use k p I have been interchange yeah k p ok. So, it is here k p k p to k p dash. So, k p dash is the new free wave after the influence of the acoustics ok. But you see then what is the nature of the fluid loading? Nature of the fluid loading. So, the next question. Okay. The reason it is relevant now is I have F tilde or V tilde is equal to minus J D K P dash to the power fourth minus M omega square by omega plus okay. one form is rho 0 C by square root of 1 minus k p dash by k whole squared that is a possibility. The other is j rho 0 c by square root of k p dash by k whole square minus 1 ok. So, the fluid loading nature depends on k p dash ok and k p dash is not yet found k p dash depends on this equation ok. Unless we solve this k p dash equation which will actually be fifth order we do not know where k p dash lies that decides the nature of fluid loading. So, the it is circular ok the choice of the equation tells me k p dash and the value of k p dash tells me whether choice is correct or not we are in circular zone. So, now of course, as I said in the Crichton's problem we, we computed all of this ok. So, we are just trying to um, talk about it under the title of fluid loading ok. So, uh, so let me write what I am trying to say here. 
the the form of fluid loading whether this or this requires knowledge of k p dash and k p dash knowledge requires the form. form being this or that ok. So, without without so much details if you have to make a simplistic argument what do we do? We know that the in vacuo bending wave number is given by k p is equal to m omega square by d to the power half uh, and one fourth sorry ok and below coincidence k b is bigger than k ok and so so, it is likely it is likely that the fluid loading is inertial ok. Inertial meaning the fluid will load with a further inertia ok. So, not knowing not knowing where coincidence will lie right where the new coincidence is or the new um, k p let me k p coincidence is, but at very low frequency we will we know fluid behaves as inertia ok. And so, we will say that k p dash is greater than k p ok. That means, my z fluid is j the 0 c by square root of k p dash by k whole squared minus 1 which is equal to j rho 0 c k by k p dash ok which is equal to j omega let it let it be rho 0 rho and rho 0 both are mean fluid density ok omega rho 0 by k p dash ok this k p is much greater than k p k p dash is much greater than k p and therefore this one has been ignored ok. Now, if we now go and plug this back here ok. If I go and plug it back here what I will now get is d times k p dash to the power fourth ok minus m omega square uh, hold on. minus omega square into m plus rho 0 by k p dash 
is equal to zero. Okay, so this is a fifth order equation. Okay, so if we further assume, further assume, so these are heuristic arguments. Okay, further assume that d k p dash to the power fourth is much greater than omega square m okay then my k p dash is omega square rho zero by d to the power one fifth k p dash is equal to k p dash is equal to Okay. So, these are limit arguments about fluid loading. Okay. So, we can say now in dense fluids, okay, that is why K B dash K P dash is so much bigger than K P in dense fluids below critical frequency or coincidence. the plate mass has no effect on the free bending wave number. Okay. This kind of back at the envelope uh, physical arguments. Okay. So, that closes the section on infinite plate and acoustic half space. Okay. Now, suppose the plate is finite, suppose the plate is finite. Okay. Then again we have a 1D plate, a finite plate okay, with V tilde P sin m pi x over L excited harmonically and this is between x 0 to L and 0 elsewhere. Okay, and this is in a baffle. This is in a baffle. Okay, and so we compute the one-dimensional Fourier transform. We get B tilde P because outside L vibration is zero sine m pi x by L e to the power of minus j k x x d x okay. and this is given by minus a j by 2 p tilde p integral 0 to l and I break the sign minus e to the power of minus j k m x. So, this is k m that is k m e to the power of minus j k x x d x. Okay. Now, if we look at the amplitude V tilde k x is equal to V tilde p twice pi m l by k x l whole squared minus m pi whole squared into sin k 
के एक्स एल माइनस एम पाई बाई टू ओके सो वी कैन फाइंड वी कैन फाइंड the surface acoustic pressure from here surface acoustic pressure from here how is that we know that the p at that kx at y equal to 0 is equal to z tilde w fluid kx into v tilde of kx Okay, so far no omega here, no omega till here. Okay, no omega involved till here. Okay, omega now after this stage decides nature of z tilde w f ok the z tilde w f depends on how v tilde k x is distributed with respect to the acoustic wave number. Okay. Okay. If K x is greater than K, then Z tilde w f is purely imaginary whereas if k x is less than k then z tilde is real there will be absolutes on this also ok the pressure the pressure on the surface is given by 1 over twice pi integral minus infinity to infinity p tilde k x y equal to 0 e to the word j k x x d k x ok and this infinity now breaks up right p tilde breaks up as rho 0 c by twice pi the basic integral v tilde of k x 1 minus k x over k whole squared whole squared to the power minus half d k x this is the resistive part Okay, plus j rho 0 c by twice pi integral k to infinity v tilde k x k x by k whole squared minus 1 to the power minus half j k x x d k x this is reactive ok 
then further the other remaining portion integral minus infinity to minus k we tilde k x k x over k whole squared minus 1 minus half d k x that is also reactive. These mostly do not have closed form solutions. Okay. One could possibly try complex variables contour integrations, but no closed form solutions mostly and you have to do numerics. Okay. As I have said this portion I am taking from the book by Frank Fahey and so he approximates these integrals further and makes some comments. Okay. But I think this is good enough as a idea that introduces fluid loading. Okay. <coughs> now, we have seen uh, for an infinite case, okay, an infinite panel uh, in contact with an acoustic half space or a finite panel radiating into an infinite domain. Okay. So, the other fluid loading idea, the other fluid loading idea comes for contained fluids. contained fluids. Okay. Fluid is enclosed by the structure. Okay. So, what would be a simple system? I have a spring loaded piston that is kind of the mouth of a duct okay, of length L. Okay, it is exactly your cycle pump. So, this has spring constant S, this has a mass M okay, and other this is a medium with rho and C etcetera. So, if I force this mass over here, then there is a specific acoustic impedance of the form minus j rho 0, let me say so 0, I am getting used to 0 pi a square cot k l. Then we have um, this is what uh, force over area squared okay this is force over area squared units force divided by area and one more area units okay then similarly the z of the piston is j omega m minus s over omega this is force units divided by area twice. Now, both are same units. Okay. Now, as I said once you talk of contained fluids the question is about natural frequencies main question where do the natural frequencies lie. So, the original natural frequency of the piston is square root of s by m and the duct has its infinite natural frequencies. Okay. So, if we talk about this combined impedance, how does it look like? The combined impedance looks like j omega m minus s over omega 
into 1 over pi a square whole squared ok. Now, this is a common velocity junction this velocity is common which means the total force divided by the velocity is the force taken up by the mass divided by the same velocity plus the force taken by the duct divided by the same velocity. So, the impedances will straight away add. So, the other impedances minus j rho 0 c over pi a squared cot k l. So, this is a transcendental term cot k l ok. Now, fully imaginary this term is imaginary that term is imaginary. So, if we set it to 0 we can find the combined natural frequencies ok. So, let us do that omega m minus s over omega 1 by pi a squared whole squared ok that is equal to rho 0 c by pi a squared into cot k l ok. So, we will make everything cot k l. So, first of all let us cancel one area here. So, we get um, omega m we take it outside. So, I get 1 minus omega 0 squared by omega squared is equal to rho 0 c pi a squared cot k l ok. Now, here I divide by c divide by c uh, and multiply by c. So, omega m divide by c and multiply by c multiply by l and divide by l ok into 1 minus omega 0 square by omega square. Let me remove this here into rho 0 c pi a square cot k l ok. So, what happens now? Omega by c is k into l is k l ok and this c cancels with this c. So, I have k l into m this I will like take it to the other side 1 minus ok. I can write this as k 0 square l square by k square l square nothing changes ok is equal to rho 0 into length into area of the duct cot k l ok and I divide by m over here or hold on keep the m keep the m for now. So, this is the mass of air in the duct m d. So, I have k l m mass of piston by mass of duct into 1 minus k 0 square l square by k square l square is equal to cot k l ok. Everything is in terms of k l now ok. So, where this goes to 0 or left side equals right side are the new omegas new resonances why k carries omega k l is omega by c into l ok. So, now again this is a uh, opportunity for doing 
limiting operations and so forth. So, we will we'll see one or two cases. So, the answer is basically here there is nothing else to be done okay, but that does not give us much insight. So, we have to do some limiting operations small values of something or large values of something to get a feel. So, that is what we will look at one or two cases okay. So, we will plot cot k l first. If we plot cot k l what do we get it starts off at infinity this is pi by 2, this is a pi, this is a 3 pi by 2, the 2 pi and so forth. So, it starts off at infinity goes through 0 goes off to negative infinity starts off at infinity goes through 0 because tan is infinite there. and so forth. This is the right part. Now, for the left part we will do one approximation let us say k 0 l the original resonance is very very small very small ok. Then what happens this k l this is the k l axis ok I have already plotted cot k l ok. So, k l will start so we are looking at the left side now. So, k l starts off at 0. So, it minus infinity it sort starts off here minus infinity and as k l starts to increase somewhere k l is equal to k 0 l. So, this term is 1 that 1 goes off with 1. So, you get a 0. Okay. So, you get a 0 crossing somewhere, you get a 0 crossing ok. Now, as k l goes further and further high ok this will be small compared to 1 because denominator is big then the left side is approximately m by m d into k l. So, it is a straight line with slope m by m d. And typically piston mass can be heavier than the air. So, this thing would actually go off at a very sharp angle in a straight line. So, that means what the new so the new value so whereas as the original value may have been here the new value now of resonance is here the new k l value. Okay. So, old k value k 0 l was here new value is here where the two curves intersect. So, the new k l is new bigger than k 0 l ok that means what this piston piston resonance mounted on the spring ok which is m and s originally was square root of s by m now has gone up now has gone up. So, what happened at very low frequencies at low frequencies if you have gone through acoustics a duct ok whose length is much smaller than acoustic wavelength lambda is much greater than the acoustic wavelength then the duct behaves like a spring a short duct is a stiffness is a spring ok. At low frequencies a short duct that is closed at the end much smaller than the acoustic wavelength behaves like a spring stiffness. So, that springiness attaches to the original spring and therefore, the resonance goes up ok. So, old resonance is a, is a new resonance or resonance goes up. We can do one more ok. Suppose now we have infinity of resonances and suppose a resonance k l is very very high k l is very very high. Okay. Then what happens is that 
the on the right on the left side this value can be ignored okay and what we have is m by m d into k l so it is a straight line so it is a straight line at some angle okay it is a straight line at some angle whatever be the angle and the higher and higher values they are intersecting where cot k l is infinite okay or tan k l is 0 cot k l is infinite or tan k l is 0 okay so tan k l is 0 that means k l is the order of some n pi or omega n by c into l is equal to n pi or omega n is equal to n pi c over l approximately ok. So, this is the kind of analysis you do to get a feel for uh, how the system should behave ok and there are so many cases in between ok. So, that is fluid loading uh, in finite systems ok. We have seen a case where a panel interacts with the cavity. So, you, there will be fluid loading over there, but we did not talk about it in that language. So, this is uh, this is to give you an idea of what loading, fluid loading is in finite systems ok. So, let me close the lectures over here. I am um, done more or less with this course. Uh, I hope you learned something. Um, so, thank you very much.